Welcome back. In recent times, Don Clare, the Acting Commissioner of Corrections, has lamented the fact that the Bahamas Department of Correction Services, BDOCS, is in need of more officers and a number of promotional exercises. Well, on Friday, the manpower at the prison got a little stronger as 106 new recruits graduating during an official passing out ceremony on the grounds of the prison on Friday. Minister of National Security Wayne Monroe spoke about the arrival of the new officers, what they will be faced with, and what the government plans to do to make their work environment a little better. Uh, when you look at them, it's a, it's a fine crop of Bahamian men and women who are stepping forward to serve their country. And if you look at these facilities, and not the most currently up-to-date and um, effective ones. I told the Commissioner of Corrections he needs to invite you all here when they're slopping out, because they still have pockets, um, so that you can experience the sight and sounds and smells that these officers are going to have to work in. Um, the Prime Minister repeated the commitment to move toward a purpose-built, state-of-the-art facility, not only to rehabilitate the residents in a conducive atmosphere, but also to improve the working conditions of these correctional officers. Minister Monroe also spoke about the concerns raised by the acting commissioner, Don Clare, who said recently that some 444 correction officers are awaiting promotions. What people don't understand is they have a higher qualification for promotion than do the police and defense force and every other agency. We've addressed that in their career path adjustment. It was approved finally in cabinet a couple of weeks ago. Their material then is available to go to the Public Service Commission, and that's being worked on now. They have a higher standard. Surprisingly, people don't realize that. We've addressed it, and going forward, um, it should be a smoother process. That was Minister of National Security Wayne Monroe addressing promotions for officers of the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services. After the near drowning of a 65-year-old tourist at Cabbage Beach who was saved by a beach vendor on Sunday, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investment and Aviation Chester Cooper has announced that he has been in talks with Chairman of the Beaches and Parks Authority, Mikel Bonaby, about the number of lifeguards on Bahamian beaches. Mr. Cooper revealed efforts to increase the presence of lifeguards on public beaches. Uh, I've been in recent conversation with the Chairman of Beaches and Parks and he is actively engaged in employing more lifeguards for public beaches. Uh, the beaches uh, where there are large hotels, for example, uh, Cabbage Beach, uh, are usually manned by lifeguards from the various hotels. But the public beaches like uh, Goodness Bay, Jumbo Beach, uh, etc., want to ensure adequacy. Uh, all across uh, New Providence and eventually in the islands as well. The Minister of Tourism went on to describe the ongoing efforts to train Bahamian lifeguards and its importance to the public safety. Development Corporation has trained more than 100 lifeguards uh, in the last 12 months. We continue to uh, train more. Uh, we believe this is a space where there's opportunity for young people uh, to find meaningful employment. Uh, I told a story of how distressed I was going to one of the cruise private islands, and there were very few Bahamians working as lifeguards, so we identified this as an opportunity. Deputy Prime Minister Cooper responds to suggestions for more lifeguards comes after an increase in drownings, near drownings, and shark attacks so far this year. Michael Johnson became the first Family Island-based winner of the Deltec Young Entrepreneurs Award, which comes with a $10,000 investment in his aquaponics shrimp farm on Grand Bahama. Johnson, along with five other finalists, competed in a pitch competition hosted by the Deltec Young Entrepreneurs Initiative. According to the DIYE chairman, Robert Turnquist, the Dell Tech Initiative for Young Entrepreneurs seeks to empower and support young Bahamians with innovative ideas to grow their small to medium-sized enterprises. Absolutely. It was very spirited. So five of our entrepreneurs were finalists presenting, and they had the opportunity to present their businesses in the form of a pitch approximately lasting five minutes. And following that pitch, 
there was a Q&A session lasting up to approximately 15 minutes. And after that 15 minutes, each judge scored each entrepreneur based on their pitch as well as based on their Q&A session. And so um, the five entrepreneurs who presented were scored and the winning entrepreneur today was Michael Johnson of Blue Water Organic Farms. And so we're very proud that we've arrived at that decision, but truthfully, we're proud of all our entrepreneurs who um, put in the effort and the time and the work um, to get to this point to answer uh, very incisive and direct questions from an esteemed panel of judges. So from our standpoint, um, we have one winner, but we're proud of all of our finalists. According to TurnQuest, Johnson's win signifies a successful national effort to cast a wide net and attract young entrepreneurs from around the country. Bamsey graduate and aquaponics farmer Michael Johnson emerged victorious. His Blue Water Organic Farm is on the brink of pioneering the national seafood industry by providing fresh, sustainable seafood, mainly shrimp, to national supermarket chains, five-star restaurants, and neighborhood eateries. He expressed his delight about the opportunity. It's exciting. I'm excited that um, DIY, they shared in my vision, and um, it also shows that um, DIY is bipartisan in their decision making, not only geared towards Nassauvians, but all the family islands as well. You know, so I'm excited about it. Um, it was, ex I had to be extremely hands-on, I could say that. Um, it was a lot of work, but ultimately, you know, it paid off. That feel is not an option. <laughs> That's number one. Um, but in addition to that, they also showed that um, when you're dealing with business, like obstacles, because we went through a lot of obstacles, it's inevitable, mm -hmm. you know, and they stress that the resilient companies are the ones that last, you know, and my win is example of that. Because I was resilient, I feel like that was a big contributing factor as to why I won. The Dell Tech Foundation congratulated all of the finalists, encouraging those that did not win the award to not give up on their entrepreneurial pursuits. And finally, residents of Seabreeze Estate gathered at Charles Carter Park to enjoy a holly jolly Christmas party over the weekend. Member of Parliament for the constituency, Leslie Bryce, transformed the local park into a festive wonderland for children and adults. Residents enjoyed Christmas-style dinners and entertainment. Holiday joy was spread throughout and giveaways with shiny bikes and grand raffling going on. Lucky winners walking away with 50-inch smart televisions and things of that sort. Here is Mrs. Bryce to talk about the event. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so, so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your love and support. To all of my little ones here, our Sea Breeze Jams, I hope you had a good time today. All, everybody had a good time? Yeah. Everybody had a good time? Yeah. All right. The evening closed with a dazzling tree lighting ceremony and an explosion of colorful fireworks. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Thank you.